I'm doing something a little different with some vintage Avia. Avia now is worse than Skechers. But 80s Avias were untouchable unless you had like the Jordan 1 or 2. Avia's iconic basketball silhouette in themselves as a brand has been widely forgotten. There's been some inspiration recently with Avia. In 2019, Louis Vuitton and Virgil Abloh created the Louis Vuitton 408, which was a clever remake of a past Avia shoe. Regardless of that, people still forgot about Avia, except for me, I'm always looking. I actually found these Avia 830s on eBay for about $55, and they reminded me of a pair of Avias that I used to own back in 2017. And I really miss those shoes, I don't know what happened to them. However, these 830s are not my size, but I saw a lot of potential in them, so I'm gonna fix them up. The shoes look super crusty, so I'm gonna do my usual shoe cleaning routine. You can already see the difference with just using shoe cleaner. The white leather is still rough, so I'm gonna prepare them for a repaint. I'm mostly gonna touch them up for now. Now the ankle padding colors is where it's really messed up. The synthetic leather has deteriorated to a point where it's flaking off, so I'm gonna remove it. I'm yet again using the trusty acetone and cotton ball mix. It got off all the old flakes, but it kind of dyed the colors blue, which is okay for me. Since I'm using acetone, I'm gonna use it on this heel support so I can take out the scratches. Just a minor difference, but that's fine. I go back to the collar so I can do my tennis ball method, which is the method that I created for cracked synthetic material. I call it tennis balling because the exposed felt looks like a tennis ball. I'm gonna add multiple coats of paint and then I'm gonna dremel it down to flatten it. And then I add leather filler, I dip my finger in the filler seat and then I spread it evenly across the surface. I wait for the filler to dry and then I smoothen it out with acetone. It's kind of like auto body work, but for shoes. And then I add one coat of paint just to see the results. I'm not gonna finish the collars just yet. I'm gonna gonna unyellow the shoes and clean them up a little more before I do that. Don't worry, I'm gonna get back to the collars. I'm gonna deoxidize them because they're too yellow for my liking. If you like the yellowing, that's too damn bad. This is a restoration, not how can I look more dingy. Uh, a frequently asked question that I get is, how long do I leave my soles out in the sun? If the rubber or plastic is a solid color, you can leave them out for about an hour and a half, and it'll look like this. It's not too long to damage the rubber, but it also brings it back to factory color. Just make sure they don't get too hot. Okay, so back to the collars. Like I said, it was like auto body work, so you have to frequently sand and paint and sand. I use fine sandpaper, like 800 and 1200 grit. Enough painting and sanding gets your tennis ball fuzzy-like material from this to that. But the leather filler did most of the work in this situation. I did mess up quite frequently and I left a lot of paint splotches, so I'm gonna get them up with acetone and a Q-tip. And then I did some minor paint touches, which weren't so minor, because they ended up taking up most of my time in this restoration anyways. And after painting just the blue details on the leather, I have to paint the white. I want to match the natural look of the leather, so I'm using vintage white. This is a custom paint mix that I made because white is too bright. Just like the blue, I'm adding multiple coats of paint so I can get rid of 40 years of blemishes. Oops, did I say 40? I meant like 35. And it always feels great to renew something. And you know what I kept thinking about while working on these? Just me, myself, and I